An in-house conversation that needs to take place among African-American women is regarding mother-daughter relations, wherein the mother is jealous of the daughter. There are very many natural and unnatural reasons for why there may be competition, but we should first acknowledge the signs as well as the detriment in order to remove it as something common among us. Now, when I first heard of this as a teenager, I didn't take it seriously because I have a loving African-American matriarch. Like when Tyler Perry's Medea moved from the stage to the actual big screen in Hollywood, like friends, family, colleagues, students, people who worked with my mom, church, like all over the place, people were so positive that my mother's personality had been plagiarized and that we needed to sue, okay? (laughs) We just, my mother and I, we've never experienced jealousy in regards to one another. We have this, you know, unlimited, just unconditional love between one another. And that's me and my mom, my siblings, like, and, and other people who have this relationship with my mother who are not, you know, her children. And I imagine that that was a norm. I ignorantly, from not knowing, I I imagine that that was a norm among mothers and daughters, that mothers are just the best thing since sliced bread. And they're just so wonderful when, in fact, families are as diverse as ethnic groups and nations across the, you know, across the world. Um <clears throat> In this information age, we were learning about powerful subjects such as the reality of mental health diversity. Pathologies are real and play a very tangible part in all of our lives. Narcissistic personality disorder has been a particularly hot topic in mainstream social media as of late. The disorder has been grossly underdiagnosed and misunderstood, and I hate when people ignorantly speak of narcissistic personality disorder based on someone who hurt their feelings or use gaslight in the wrong way. It just grinds my gear as a person with CPTSD because I was with a narcissist, a true text with narcissist for five years. So in reading the DSM-5, I think it's oftentimes really easy for people to look at the, that diagnostic criteria and just check the list of qualities up against a given individual, you know, as an onlooker to their dysfunction. Oftentimes, daughters of mothers who are jealous of them are indeed children of narcissists. Like, it, it's just not normal. Um, it's just not normal. I mean, when I refer to narcissist or narc from here on out, I don't mean Narcissus, the Greek god who fell in love with his own reflection and laid himself lakeside, staring at his own reflection and the water's reflection eternally. I have had so many people decide that conceited people and people who love to look in the mirror are narcissists. And I'm just like, yo, that's narcissistic, but that is not a narcissist. Like, that is not congruent with the personality disorder. Like, okay, I get it, the name stem from the same root, but honey, that is not the same. Being conceited and convinced about how beautiful you are and how much of a 10 you are, that is not the same as, you know, this brutal mental illness. So um, again, that's not what I mean. What I mean when I say narc or narcissist from here on out is, um, like I said, I'm not going to erroneously refer to this disorder as it relates to people who are merely conceited, arrogant, and self-concerned. I'm speaking of the actual incurable disorder. I mean, so many people, like I said, think that it's just being in love with yourself, but that's really not even the half of it. Like a narcissist can cold cold case kill you remorselessly, okay? Moving on. So sometimes the narcissist in their mind doesn't actually mean to harm you. Now, the responsibility of the narc and their actions rest entirely upon their shoulders. However, understanding the disorder lends some insight into why things are the way that they are. Being sensitive to everything is just how their brains work. And sensitivity is not the problem. I think it's the presumed slight, right? That is is more the problem because sensitivity is a blessing, especially spiritually. Um, but they don't have the blessing side of it. They have the burden, okay? Um, the, the cursed side of it. Um, so they're inverted... If I could describe a narcissist, I would call them the inverted opposite of empaths. 
It is a pathology that no one can change, not us, not them. When a narc is being or feels attacked, so this, this might be a completely imagined slight, they will fight back harder than what they perceived as the initial blow. Like you poke them, they kill you. <laughs> Accidental, intentional, non-existent, like it, it doesn't matter. According to their nature, they may be viciously vindictive, wanting to hurt you as well. So there are times where they don't intend to hurt you and there are times that they do because hurting you makes them feel superior. The narc's ego is permanently bruised and aching at all times, internally shouting at them their inferiority. As a coping mechanism, they develop this super ego akin to a god, a god complex in order to drown out that inner voice of their actual ego that beckons them to self-destruction right, and, and self-hatred. Now, some mothers are jealous of their daughters because they struggle with low self-esteem. Dissatisfied with their own lives, when a mother favors one daughter over another is often because the preferred daughter is more similar to her. Playing favorites and having a black sheep or a scapegoat is the order of the day in families wherein there is a narcissistic mother or father, but in this case, we're going to talk about mothers. When a narcissistic mother has a child that shares the same beliefs, common interests, and thus making similar life choices, they, they rejoice in living vicariously through that child. The black sheep or family scapegoat becoming one of the furthest in kind from the narc parent because they have less in common. Healthy mothers are proud of their children and want them to shine. A narcissistic mother perceives her daughter as a threat. If she sees her daughter as a threat, it is often rooted in jealousy. The mother can be jealous of her daughter for many reasons. Her looks, her youth, material possessions, accomplishments, education, worst yet, the child's relationship with their father. And oh my God, on that one. Non-narcissistic mothers have expressed jealousy towards their daughter when the mother takes on a new husband or boyfriend who seems in her eyes to prefer their daughter over her. When this is the case, the mother should leave that man in fear of what he might do to her daughter of abuse. Because for you to even be, be able to feel those feelings, like, like something is wrong, that relationship doesn't need to exist. Because as a mother, it is ideal for you to protect your children first and at all cost, even at personal cost to yourself. Now, some mothers stay due to feeling their sexual market value is so low that they can do no better than the man they are with. Uh, should a daughter in such a situation claim that the stepfather or mother's boyfriend molested them in some way, the daughter will be blamed due to the mother's inability to cope with and accept the reality that her daughter has been harmed by a man that she loves, by a man that the mother loves. You and your mom could be living in a toxic narcissistic mother-daughter relationship if most or all of the following is true for you. One, she's an attention whore. Steady trying to steal the spotlight from you. Two, she's bored with or disinterested in your good news. Three, she mocks and engages you or engages in gossip about you. Four, she changes her physical appearance often to resemble yours. Five, she finds things to overact to in hopes of depleting your happiness. Six, she's jealous of you or has inappropriate feelings about your relationship with your dad. Seven, she always finds a reason to put you down or criticize you and finds it a pleasure to sabotage you. Eight, I mean, you notice she struggles to feel empathy, remorse, compassion, sympathy, just just human feelings. (laughs) So a toxic mother figure does not have or want for you to have any boundaries. Relationships must have boundaries, though. A toxic mother experiencing the foulest form of femininity makes you feel afraid to enforce your boundaries. Even when you reach adulthood, they are sure to make you uncomfortable for expressing boundaries. If your mother is a narcissist, you can expect her to be unwilling to understand and acknowledge your point of view as valid. She may ignore or belittle you into submission. Now, some people look at children and imagine that they were born flawed or bad. No such thing. In reality, toxic children you may have experienced are nothing more than a result of toxic parenting, toxic child rearing, the adults that were around them. Children are spongy. They merely absorb what is in their environment, right? So it is an unsatisfactory upbringing 
and low quality adults that make a child, you know, all those things that people are calling a bad kid. They are pampered and spoiled or equally disrespectful of people's boundaries or maybe even worse, neglected and abandoned, and now they're just vicious. They're known to wield a power they are not old enough to handle or mature enough to understand. If this is you, there's time to change, but self-discipline is up to you. Do not become the narcissistic mother or woman that has been the bane of your existence. It wouldn't be fair to you or anyone around you. Choose therapy and consistency. Another aspect of family life that encourages poor mother-daughter relations is the favoring of sons. Lord, if this isn't a problem. Parents may not intend to treat sons and daughters differently, but research shows that they do. They do. Sons undeniably receive preferential treatment, receiving more praise and affirming actions than their female siblings. This distances mothers from their daughters without there being a narcissist involved. Sexism and internalized misogyny abounds, especially in Afro-American culture. We have nearly turned our sons into princesses to be rescued by our daughters who become their future protectors and politically, excuse me, their future protectors politically and providers financially. This is why ideas such as hypergamy among women do not prevail, do not prevail in African-American female spaces. And that is a true travesty because that is truly backwards. The story of Snow White and the Queen is a classic example of a mother-daughter relationship where the mother has a narcissistic personality disorder type. Um, And of course, this is a condition in which someone values their own self-esteem above everyone else, above all else, lacking the capability to relate to others in a realistic way way. Consider watching this Disney movie if you have not already, because if you can relate too closely to Snow White, then Houston, we have a problem. I um, I had to forgive myself for ignoring this as an issue because it wasn't my story. And it kind of helped me to understand how other people who, let's say, maybe how there's a certain group of people who don't experience racism. And I'd be like, but how can you not see it? How can you not see it? It's everywhere. And well, if that's not their experience, then they don't see it. So you kind of have to sit in the seat of a student and learn. Right. So um, I've had to learn about this. And. I'm embarrassed because this is more common in the African-American community than I would have ever wanted to admit. But this is toxic femininity, the foulest form of femininity, and I'm really worried about that. I think a lot of mother-daughter jealousy has to do with, you know, and hear me out because I'm not shaming anyone for being an unwed mother, but good God, when they have these boyfriends and bring these men in their lives and you have so many men who are like, oh, the daughter is just a better looking version of the mother. Like you kind of have to get out of that. You can't be around pedophilic men. You can't be around pederast men. Like you just kind of have to choose better. But the problem is when, you know, you as a group of women outnumber your male counterparts and there's just not the numbers of, of, of men who are better than that are, are not necessarily in your favor. So I get that. And it can be a very lonely life trying to be a dutiful mother. But when I look at the way dogs, for example, they keep the, 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 the bitch or the mother dog, she keeps um, the father dog away from the puppy for, for weeks. Because, you know, he can he can kill them on purpose, kill them on accident. Like, he just doesn't have her maternal instinct. And I'm looking at that like, mm, I see, uh, <laughs> I see the point. Um, you know, lioness, you know, a, a new lion will come and conquer and kill all the babies, impregnate all the women. You know, zebras, don't get me started on them. Otters, holy crap, they're vicious. Like, just all over nature. Sometimes you have, like, men who are brutal towards children. And as a mother, it's like especially as a human mother, right? How how do we navigate that and our own personal loneliness when we are, you know, it didn't work out with the baby daddy or the ex-husband or insert male paternal thing, right? And I'll be honest and say, I don't have very many solutions for that. All I know is that, you know, as a mother, ideally you want to flex child first. My child comes first, Right. When in doubt, you flex, okay, well, my child comes first and this is not conducive to raising a healthy, sound child. But there's a lot of predatory behavior out there. And I can see how sometimes a mother, you know, she loses her looks 
to her daughter, basically. And it's like all the stretch marks and all the arguing and the PMS and the coming of age of teenage girls, whatever it is. And it leads to a pretty leaky, pretty inky situation. Um, like I said, I had to learn these things because this, this just wasn't my life. Um, not with my grandmother, not with my own mother, not with the women who, I mean, the mothers of people who I lived in their homes. I remember um, I spent a lot of time in the house of a white woman who had a biracial daughter and uh, she had a black boyfriend who basically uh, made a pass at both of us, but much worse when it came to her daughter because she would actually be alone with him. And, you know, one day she called me, locked in her room, away from him, scared, crying because of the, you know, him asking to see her naked. And her mom didn't treat her any kind of way. She just went off on the guy and that was appropriate. Like somebody had to hold her back from trying to fight him. And, you know, he started crying like, I don't want to lose you. I love you. And I'm just like, you are so trifling. Like you are a horrible human being. You have no self-control. What is wrong with you trying to sleep with a mother and a daughter? I will never understand. I will never understand people who are capable of that. And I'm I'm completely fine with, with, with not having any understanding or compassion for that. But the mother reacted in the right way. Whereas I had another friend who, I mean, I don't know the details of what happened with her and her stepdad, but whether she was conscious or unconscious, you know, the police determined that it wasn't a rape, but he had been with her and her mom's response was to be mad at her and, you know, tell her, oh, you're always trying to take everybody's man and you think you're so much better than everybody else and I'm never going to give him up and you're the problem and this and this. Now, the the girl is problematic on, on every level, right? Like, let me just, like, I don't talk to her anymore, but it's still was an odd thing to me that before she took her own daughter back or reconciled with her own daughter that she took this guy back who was clearly predatory and preferred uh her daughter over her again that whole beating women down over sexual market value and how oh you're never gonna find a man like me nobody else is gonna want you like that is truly a mind a, a, a melting mind mind right? Like, like a landmine for, for so many women. Um, and that requires therapy. Okay. Because of all things, a man shouldn't come between you and your child of, of, of all things. And I'm not saying there's something like super wrong with you, but like that is just a sign. Okay. Get therapy because this is nonsense. And this is not, this is not the natural order of things. So if you or somebody you know has dealt with a narcissistic parent, a parent who's tried to sabotage you, a parent who is obsessed with trying to look better than you, who, you know, undermines you, engages in gossip about you, mocks you, you know, can't stand for you to have good news, belittles your every effort and accomplishment, like comment down below because I think we need to have a conversation about this and the African-American community specifically because the African-American mother is basically our angel. And we have this stereotype of, you know, these angelic mothers because so many of so many of us are like me, right? So many of us are like me who have mothers who, who are your everything. Your preacher, your teacher, your financier, you're just your everything. And because we have that as a community issue, as people who are born primarily to single mothers and uh, single uh, matriarchs, we give bad mothers a pass, you guys. We give trifling, no good, abusive mothers a pass. We act like narcissistic personality disorder can't exist in a mother. And, oh, well, that's your mother. And, you know, you just have to honor your mother, honor that mother and their father that they date, that that days may be long upon this earth. And, you know, and African-Americans are particularly religious when it comes to morality. So whether you're a Christian or a Muslim you know, Hebrew, African-American, chances are you feel that way, even though you may actually be dealing with a narcissistic parent. And um, I think we need to make room for people who are dealing with that, because I strongly believe that if that is the case, especially as a person who has CPTSD from dealing with a narcissist, you have a right to walk away. You have a rock to the gray, you have a right to the gray rock method. You have a right to go completely cold turkey, cut that person off. And if you don't know what gray rock method is, if you don't know what a flying monkey is, if you don't know what narcissistic supply is, 
Google those terms, watch Quinn Holiday, Kim Saeed, Queen Bing. These people are some of the greatest masters of discussing narcissistic, oh, and the little shaman. If you look up these people on YouTube, you are going to run into endless beautiful, oh, and permission to exist. You're going, you're going to run into endless content on how to identify if there's a narcissist in your life, because maybe you're not a psychologist. Maybe you don't have some master's and PhD in psychology, but you can still learn that that's a human that psychologist is a human like you're a human and you can still learn and instead of paying you know thousands of dollars for you know one semester like I just recommend watching these people because they have saved the lives of people like me and so many others as you will notice in their comment section so anyhow um I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up and just let you know that like not all mother-daughter relationships are going to be a functional. And if your mother is an arc, it's better for you to get out of that relationship. And uh, I'm, I'm going to have to stand by that. Um, because an arc, I mean, a, a, an arc will not stop until one of you are dead. And that, that, that's just the reality. And there are too many people who have been killed by a narc or suicidal and killed themselves because of a narc for me to stand by that African-American value of, you know, your mother, your mother, your mother, she's always right, you know, in most cases, but not in not every case. And we have to normalize allowing people to distance themselves from that toxic mother. All right. Um, I love y'all and I can't wait to see your comments below. I'm up at Unicorn and I'm out of here.